How is it going everyone? Today I'm here with my All In pay-per-view review, of course, if you guys did not know what All In was. All In was a self-produced show by the Young Bucks and Cody, taking on Del uh, Dave Meltzer pretty much on his whole thing that, you know, Ring of Honor couldn't sell a 10,000 seat arena. Cody took that, you know, pretty much as a challenge. And, you know, I think that was about a year ago that happened, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. And uh, here we are, you know, September 1st, 2018, and Cody and Young Bucks did it. They brought, you know, 10,000 plus fans to an independent wrestling show, which is being dubbed as the biggest independent wrestling show in history. And, you know, I'm obviously here to review it, give you guys my thoughts on it. And without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump right into the review. Of course, before I actually get to the matches itself, I want to sit here and say huge congratulations to them for a huge success. And the production to the show I thought was fantastic. The production was pretty much WWE like quality. You know, you're, you're having great camera work. Well, WWE, not, you know, the constant shakes. You didn't have that here, uh, fortunately for us. Um, the stage looked great. I thought the production went off well. You had pyro, I guess you can claim. You know, they had like fire and, you know, steam and stuff like that. So I guess you can say that a pyro. Uh, the commentary was great. You had Don Callis, Excalibur, and the Ian guy from ROH. I don't really watch Ring of Honor anymore, so I'm not really too familiar with him. But I thought he did a pretty good job with those two. And um, I just thought everything was very well put together. I thought it was a huge success. The show ran five hours long, if you include the zero hour, which honestly I didn't mind because those four hours honestly flew by. Or five hours if you watch the zero hour uh, show as well. It just flew right by. It, you know, nothing really seemed like it dragged on. Besides one match. There's one match I do have one complaint about, and I'll get to that obviously later when we get to that match. But I feel like everything had a nice pace to it. Nothing felt really too rushed besides the main event because of the one match I do want to complain about. And everything just had a nice flow to it. It was nice, enjoyable. It was fun. It was, you know, the crowd was red hot for the majority of the night as well. And it was just a great time. Definitely all in. Definitely gets two thumbs up for me. I thought it was a fantastic show. Probably my, you know, definitely top five shows of the year if you ask me. Maybe, t you know, maybe top three, I would say, for, you know, me personally for this year. But I just thought it was a fantastic show. I had a lot of fun. Huge success, in my opinion, for, you know, Cody and the Young Bucks. They definitely went out there and knocked out of the park and just, you know, hit a grand slam. They really did go out there and just... You know, they put it all on the line. That's what the show was all in. You know, they went all in. They were self-financed. Obviously, they had sponsors and stuff like that come in later on. But they were all self-financed for the most part. And they took a risk. And I think it paid off greatly for them. So, I definitely can't wait for a sequel. Because I'm pretty sure there'll be another show. Whether it's called All In 2 or a different title. Whether it be in New York, you know, Los Angeles. Cow Palace, which is I'm hoping for personally. I mean, if it's, as long as it's in California, I'll go to it. Whether it's Ontario, Los Angeles, anywhere in California, I'll definitely be there for a second one if it's anywhere in California. But besides that, you know, it could be pretty much anywhere. And I definitely do think there'll be a sequel show. And maybe, who knows what the, the future leads for these two, or for these three men, because they definitely open the doors to endless possibilities, if you ask me. So, uh, that was my quick congratulations to Cody and the Young Bucks. Like I said, I feel like those two, or those three, I keep saying those two, because technically, you know, Cody and the Young Bucks are two names, but... You know what I mean. Uh, they went there and put it on the line, and it uh, definitely paid off, you ask me. And I, like, like I said, it was an awesome show, awesome experience, and like I said, it opened the door for endless possibilities in the future. So uh, just huge congratulations to those three for, you know, the huge success that they were able to achieve on this show. So, of course, going to All In, you did have the uh, Zero Hour Show, which is pretty much like a kickoff show, one hour prior to the actual show itself, which was on WGN America, which is actually a huge deal for them to be on that channel. So, that was a huge step up. I thought that was really awesome them to be on there. And quick thoughts on the Zero Hour Show. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought, you know, the matches were really good. The pacing of the show was really good as well. You didn't feel like you had a lot of filler like you usually do on WWE kickoff shows. So, I thought the presentation of the Zero Hour was very well done. It was very watchable, unlike most WWE kickoff shows where they're they're very skippable, not really worth even watching. But on that zero hour show, we did have two matches. Of course, the first match being the opening, which was the Briscoes taking on SoCal Uncensored SCU. Um, the match itself, I thought, was a damn great match. I thought you had, you know, this is definitely a hot way to start the show. The crowd was red hot. Uh, people were definitely in their seats to check it out, too. Of course, in the most WWE kickoff shows, you notice the crowd's not really paying attention to what's going on until the main show starts, but everyone were in their seats to watch this because they knew the match was going to be worth watching. The match itself, I said, I thought was great. I thought both teams went out there and, you know, just had a great uh, tag team wrestling match. Uh, SCU coming out to Rocky theme gear, so that was absolutely great. You know, that's with them building on being elite with them like running the rocky steps stuff like that so definitely played a great role and the match itself like i said that was really good briscoes were very dominant you know working on uh scorpio sky for majority of it until kaz got tagged in of course then they work on kaz and scorpio sky at the hot tag run rough shot briscoes were playing the heels and you know, they're getting their stuff in you know hitting uh the froggy uh froggy bow uh from mark briscoe on the outside which that was a great spot uh, Jay Briscoe had a Jay Driller for a near fall before Scorpio Sky broke it up when uh, Kaz was getting the pin, or maybe Scorpio Sky was getting pinned. I don't know. Someone's getting pinned at the Jay Briscoe with the Jay Driller was able to break up the pin. 
And in the last couple minutes of this match were red hot. Uh, SCU were just on a completely different level. And the finish was absolutely awesome. I felt Briscoes were going for the Doomsday Device on uh, on Kaz. But as they went forward, Kaz actually countered into the Flux Capacitor in midair. Hits it. Scorpio Sky prevents a pinfall from being broken up. So SCU defeats Briscoes in the first match. Like I said, I thought it was awesome. I thought they worked their asses off. And the crowd was red hot for SCU. And Briscoes, everyone just hated the Briscoes in that building. So... Awesome way to start the, the, the show. Definitely enjoyed that one. And then from there, I'm going to go to the number one contenders uh, over budget battle royale for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Of course, the winner of this match would go on to challenge Jay Lethal really, later on in the show for the championship. And this was one of the better battle royals, honestly, you'll see. It's a ton of fun. Everyone's getting their shit in. There were a lot of great moments in this match. And it was pretty lengthy, too. It was about a 20 minute battle royal, so I got some time. But like I said, everyone was able to shine. Like, Jordan Grace was able to shine. She actually deadlifted. Um, Brian Cage, which she kind of fucked up because she was trying to do squats, but she couldn't hold them up. So Brian Cage and I'm just pretty much tossing over. I thought that was pretty funny. She ended up actually eliminating Brian Cage. This match was pretty impressive. Uh, Jimmy Jacobs hit a uh, fine local shuffle uh, on, I believe, Austin or Austin or Billy Gunn. One of the two, uh, which, hey, Austin and Billy Gunn were in this, which I thought was awesome. They thought that they did some great stuff. Uh, you know, Best Friends were in it as well. Cole Cabana was in it. Uh, just a whole bunch of different names. You know, Mark, Marco Stunt, I think his name is, a little guy. I'm not really too familiar with him. He was just, you know, someone that it was just going out there and hitting lung blowers and hitting some awesome moves in this Battle Royale. And it was just a lot of fun. Uh, ending finish came, you know, bottom three were uh, Jordan Grace, uh, Cole Cabana, and Bully Ray. And, of course, you know, uh, they try to do the uh, the was off spot with Bully with you know Jordan with top rope. Billy Ray was or Bull, Billy Ray, <laughs> he's not Billy Ray Cyrus. Bully Ray was able to eliminate Jordan, and then uh, he ended up eliminating Cole Cabana, which he thought he won. And then of course out of nowhere the L what I, I can't pronounce his name, but you know guy in the mask comes out that's on being elite, and uh, eliminates Bully Ray, and it's being revealed to be Flip fucking Gordon. So even though Cody was so persistent that Flip was all out. Flip is now all in. So Flip wins the number one contenders battle royal to face Jay Lethal later on the night. Like I said, damn good battle royal. Very enjoyable. I had a lot of fun watching it. A lot of great moments and a lot of good spots in that match. So definitely worth watching on the zero hour show. Like I said, that is worth checking out. So I definitely recommend checking that out, out as well as the main show. And then of course, to go to the main show, which opened up with Matt Cross versus MJF. Um, this was a late edition that no one really cared about. I was watching like this should not have opened the show because no one gave a shit about it. It was just very basic wrestling, not really much to it. MGF, I know um, he gets a lot of talk on Twitter, but to me, he's just a very average wrestler who can talk. So there's nothing really about him that, at least I've seen so far, that really intrigues me about him. But him, Matt Cross, had a match. He was working on Matt Cross's arm. Uh, not really much to it. Matt, Matt Cross went with the shooting star. So, yeah, very just basic wrestling. This definitely should not open the show, if you ask me. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to Stephen Amell taking on Christopher Daniels, of course, with special guest referee Jerry Lynn, Cradle Pile Driver, boom, fire. If you watch the Best Friends show, you'll understand that reference. But um, this match itself was actually a good match. Stephen Amell went out there and he worked his ass off and looked really good for the most part. He's in some great moves, you know, he took some great bumps, like he tried to elbow drop Christopher Daniels through a table. Christopher Daniels moved and ended up going through the table by himself. And the table fucking exploded, by the way. Like it wasn't like a WWE break where he just goes down. That table fucking just disintegrated when he landed on it. I thought it was an awesome spot. Uh, Stephen Amell actually hit a Falcon Arrow, which was very impressive. He ended up hitting uh, Coast to Coast as well. So Stephen Amell, for his first singles match, and you know, he, he works on Arrow, so he doesn't have a lot of time to practice, he would think. But he went out there and he looked like he fucking belonged in wrestling, to be perfectly honest. I mean, on, he, I mean, obviously he gassed out. Like, you can tell he's getting tired in the match, but, you know, for a guy that doesn't wrestle all the time and, he's, you know, who doesn't have a lot of tra time to train... He did very well for himself. I thought Christopher Daniels, you know, being a legend, he carried him, you know, he hit some great moves on him, hit the, you know, the best moves all ever and whatnot, and uh, ended up, end up winning with the BME, of course, on uh, on Stephen Amell. So Christopher Daniels did the win over Stephen Amell. They showed respect, shook hands after that. Like I said, good match. Enjoyed it. Stephen Amell looked really good for, you know, not being an experienced wrestler. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to the four corner survival match, of course, Brick Baker, who came out to Adam Cole's old theme song. Automatic, one of the greatest of all time for that, by the way. Brick Baker. Our one of the goats. Britt Baker, Chelsea Green, Madison Rain, and Tessa Blanchard, who actually came out with her father as, as well as Magnum TA. So I thought that was really cool of her to come out with those two. I thought that was a great thing. But um, this was a this was a great match as well. I had a lot of fun watching this. I thought all four girls got their shit in and looked good. Especially Tessa Blanchard. Obviously, this match is more designed to make her look good than anyone else because obviously she's the most dominant person in this match. But like I said, I thought everyone looked, worked really hard, uh, worked really well, worked really hard. Uh, you know, Madison Rain had a nice, uh, su not a suicide dive, a nice... Uh, 
crossbody off the top to the outside at one point for a nice spot. Uh, all the girls got in the ring and did the signature stuff. Uh, Chelsea Green, you know, kind of paid tribute to Zach Ryder in the broski boot. Hit a curb stop as well as a prettier for a near fall at one point, which that came out great. Burt Baker tried to steal the win at one point, uh, hitting a super kick on uh, Chelsea Green. And, uh, no, it was, I think, I think Tessa Blanchard, I forgot what happened, but Chelsea Green was laid out. It looked like she was done. Uh, Burt Baker hit a super kick on Tessa Blanchard and, and covered Chelsea Green, who kicked out or... I think I broke it up one and two. I don't know, I'm not really too sure what happened, but and he was kind of fucked up too. Uh, Tessa Blanchard hit a, a um, DDT on Chelsea Green, I believe, and pinned her. But when she pinned her, someone broke the pin up. But I think Britt Baker broke it up. But when it got when she went to break it up, three count already happened. So everyone thought it got broken up. But the referee saying it was three count. I'm not really too sure what happened there. But the ref, the, the finish got fucked up somehow. But didn't take away from the match. I still thought all four women worked incredibly hard. They all got their stuff in. And it was very fun. It was very entertaining. I thought Chelsea Green played her character greatly. The whole hot mess character. And, you know, for someone I haven't, I haven't really seen much of Britt Baker. I just know of her because she's Adam Cole's girlfriend. Uh, but I, she impressed me. I thought she worked really well. And, um... You know, Madison Rain, I've always liked Madison Rain, so she looked good as well. So, yeah, all four of them worked incredibly hard and worked, a, you know, a really good four-corner survival with, of course, it's Tess Blanchard winning, like I said. So, great stuff there from all four of them. And from there, we go to the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship match. Of course, Nick Adelis, uh, at is it Adelis or Adelis? Adis? I don't know, who cares? Uh, taking on Cody, which I just want to say... The, I, I've always been a huge fan of like the UFC like entrances where they show the video package and they show like the challenger walking out with like his crew and then he comes out and then the champion comes out with his crew. Uh, I thought that was absolutely great the way they presented it and it, it was such a big fight feel like when Cody came out I was getting goosebumps like I was like holy shit this is a fucking huge match we're about to witness right here. And the match itself was was really good. I thought it was like an old school NWO vibe too which I thought was awesome. Um, it definitely felt like it, and I thought it was wrestled like it as well. It was kind of a slower pace. They weren't really doing much. They were really feeding off the crowd, which is great. You know, you want to feed off that crowd's energy. And the crowd was fucking red hot, fired up for this match, which made it even more uh, special, if you ask me. But, you know, I had some basic wrestling, not really too much. You know, Cody trying to hit signature stuff, and Nick Atlas, you know, able to avoid it. Uh, the match really started kicking up when Nick Atlas hit an uppercut on Cody on the, uh, the turnbuckle. Cody flew under the ground to the point where the referee put an X up. So... At this point, I didn't even know if Cody was... I thought, you know, it was a work. Especially when DDP came out. DDP came running out to kind of push Cody through it. But it got to a point where it was like five minutes wasting at this point of them doing nothing. I'm like, holy shit, is he really injured? And, you know, at this time period, and Cody's kind of recovering. Sean Devari comes out, gets in the referee's face. DDP hits a diamond cutter on Sean Devari. I don't know why, but it was awesome. And, um, you know, then it's revealed that Cody's busted open. So it took Cody five minutes to blade himself because he was, he was doing it for a while. Trust me, he was on the floor trying to blade himself for a while because, yeah. <laughs> because so he's all bladed up, you know, shades of Dusty Rhodes and Ric Flair when Dusty won the NWA World Championship with Great American Bash. Of course, that's what they're going for, obviously, in this match. And, you know, Nick Adelos was used as a target. You know, he was working over Cody's back, you know, railing his back into the to the post to the point where Cody couldn't even hit up Alabama slam. He had to really muscle his way through it uh, after he pretty much dumped Nick Adelis on his head and lifted him up, up again to hit another, or uh, to successfully hit the Alabama slam that time. Uh, so he was, he was working on his back. He was bleeding. Nick Adelis took advantage of it. Uh, kicked out of the crossroads after Cody Rhodes hit, hit or Cody hit it on Nick Adelis at one point, but it kicked out. Uh, Nick Adelis locked in. He hit a power bomb, and then he locked in a cloverleaf, which I just want to point out. I don't watch a whole lot of Nick Adelis. I haven't watched anything really from him since his TNA days. And supposedly the Cloverleaf is finished, right? He puts the Cloverleaf on. It is so fucking bad. I thought it was a horrible rock version, like the rocks version of the sharpshooter. That's how fucking terrible it looked. I thought it was a sharpshooter. And it was supposed to be a Cloverleaf. It looked very, very bad. I was like, Jesus Christ, that's a terrible Cloverleaf. But yeah, you couldn't, you could not even try to pull that as a false finish because that was an absolutely terrible submission the way he applied it. But it's applied. Cody fights out of it. You know, Cody is really selling. He's selling that he's pretty much dead. Nick's just beating the hell out of him to the point where he sets Cody up for an elbow drop. But Brandy Rhodes runs in there, covers Cody, saying no, no, no. Ends up hitting the elbow drop. Ends up hitting, you know, going on top of Brandy. Brandy's out of the ring at one point. And then, you know, Cody fires up, you know, gets a disaster kick. He's had his comeback. And, uh, you know, they're going back and forth. And Nick Adams tries to hit a, um, oh, what the fuck's it called? Not a bulldog. But he tries to float over him to roll him up, and I just, my mind's going blank right now what it's called. But as he tries to do that, Cody just fucking goes down on him, holds him down, and pins him. One, two, three, and Cody is the brand new NWA's World's Heavyweight Champion. 
and what a moment and what a match i honestly did think it was a hell of a match i thought it was an old school style nwa world's title match which you know if you know me i've always been a huge fan of old school world title matches like that so it definitely was my cup of tea and i just thought the moment was great with cody you know holding the championship and you know him bleeding blood over his face pretty much paying homage to how his father beat rick flair for the nwa world's heavyweight championship the great american bash I just thought it was a great moment for him. I really wish I could have seen the face of Dusty when that happened because I can just imagine Dusty's big smile, being proud of his son Cody, for seeing how far he's come. And um, it was a hell of a moment and a hell of a match. I honestly did really enjoy it. I thought it was great. And um, yeah, that was a great moment. And like I said, it gave me goosebumps and it was a big fight feel to it. Uh, from there, we go to the Chicago street fight uh, between Hangman Page and... Um, uh, Joey Janela, sorry, my mind went completely blank right there for a second. This was an awesome match right here. These two went out there and absolutely killed it. They tried to kill each other, and it almost worked. You know, at first it's kind of basic wrestling. Then, of course, the weapons started getting the play. They actually brought in a Cracker Barrel, like an actual Cracker Barrel barrel, which I thought was great, which was actually used at one point when uh, um, Joey Janela used it to pretty much dive into the crowd. Uh, you know, Hangman Page is able to do his, you know, front flip, lariat uh, on the outside, so that was great. Ladder got introduced at one point, which, you know, Adam Page went to give a burning hammer onto Joey Janelle onto the ladder, but it didn't come off good at all. It looked like he just threw him on the ladder. It was supposed to be a burning hammer, but I don't know if Adam Page fucked it up or Joey Janela, but it didn't come off good at all. I didn't like the way it came off. It looked absolutely terrible if you asked me, but what can you do? Uh, Penelope Ford got involved. Uh, she actually brought it, uh, you know, Adam Page had a bag. You know, she prevented it from happening. She actually gave Adam Page a stunner, uh, which came off pretty nicely, and, you know, she actually got involved once again towards the end of the match. Uh, you know, and then Joy Janelle on the stage set up two tables, you know, to put Adam Page through. But Adam Page ended up powerbombing him off the stage to the table, which he only went through one table. He barely even hit the table to begin with. So I uh, barely hit the table, went through it, and um, that was just an insane spot. He, he he flew pretty far, and he still missed. So that was an insane spot right there. Back in the ring, you know, it looked like Adam Page is going to beat him, hit the right, right of passage. Penelope Port, uh, Ford breaks the pin up. Uh, which she fucked it up, by the way. That was clearly a three count, but she did it too late. The timing was off on that one. And then she reveals that uh, there's two boots. That, of course, the boots that have been haunting Adam Page, Hangman Page, on being the elite were there. Uh, he's freaking out, wondering what the fuck's going on. Uh, and he super kicks the shit out of Penelope Ford, which I, uh, which came off great. Which led to Joy Janela super kicking the fuck out of Adam Page, nearly killed him, uh, which was absolutely insane. Lada gets back into the ring. Uh, Joey Janela sets it up to try to do something to Adam Page. Adam Page fights out of it. Adam Page hits a rite of passage off the fucking ladder through a table for the win. So Hangman Page defeats Joey Janela, which was a great Chicago street fight. These two went up there and beat the hell out of each other. Had a lot of insane spots, like I said, you know, being powerbombed off the stage through a table. The, the finish was absolutely insane. There's a lot of great stuff happened in this match, and these two went out there and had a really great fight. Really, really utilized stipulation. Because this, it's, this was a match that I honestly didn't give a shit about until they announced the stipulation a couple days ago. That's when I was like, okay, now this is the reason to look forward to this match. But, yeah, uh, just a killer match. Like I said, these two went out there and just had... Uh, a really good um, Chicago street fight. And of course, after that, you, of course, you had the big O, you know, lights go out, lights come back on. Uh, <laughs> the resurrection of uh, Joey Ryan. You know, you see him dead and then, you know, gets a heart on. And then a, a flood of druids come out, but with a penis costume. I'm like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. And of course, Joey Ryan comes out, he's resurrected. Does his signature penis stuff to Adam Page, and that's it. So the whole big presentation, Joy Ryan come out, throw some oil, you know, gives him the penis plex, or the dick plex, what the fuck's called, and uh, that's pretty much it. You know, and the penises carry Adam Page away. You know how the druids would, you know, hold him up and take him backstage, like the Undertaker. Uh, that's exactly what did to Adam Page. The penises took Adam Page out. I love professional wrestling. I really do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a great fight. And uh, I thought the, the ending, you know, was the weirdest fucking thing I've ever seen, probably. It was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. So, uh, got to love professional wrestling, right? Awesome stuff. Uh, from there, we go to the Ring of Honor World Championship match between Jay Lethal and Flip Gordon. 
coming out with Brandy Rhodes. And this match was very good. I thought it was a damn good match for the most part. You know, Flip Gordon got some stuff in. Of course, you know, um, Jay Lethal was being Black Machismo, which popped everyone huge. He had Lenny, pa Lenny Poffo with him, which I thought was great. Uh, you know, of course, with the whole shoulder slap that turned him into Black Machismo. He was playing out the entire match at the point where he goes on the outside randomly and just grabs Brandy Rhodes and just it says, stay here. You know how much man is always possessive over Elizabeth. This is exactly like that for Brandy Rhodes. So I thought it was played excellently. And then, you know, we played the Macho Man role throughout the entire match. At one point, you know, Brandy was in the ring telling Jay Lethal to knock it off. I'm not Elizabeth. You know, held her up like Elizabeth. And then, of course, Brandy Rhodes slapped him in the chest to break the, you know, the spell, I guess, um, that happens in being elite. So Jay Lethal goes from being black and cheese back to Jay Lethal. Him and Flip Gordon have a pretty good match. You know, Flip Gordon doing some stuff. And there's a lot of flips and a lot of, like, moonsaults and stuff like that. Typical Flip Gordon stuff. And then Jay Lethal was pretty dominant to the point where Flip Gordon was hulking up. Did the whole you thing. Uh, you know, did the whole boot thing. Then did, did a, end up doing a standing shooting star, I believe, onto um, Jay Lethal. So there were a handful of times after that Hulk up where, you know, I was like, oh, my God, Flip Gordon might actually win this. Because I was thinking, like, what if they do champion versus champion, Cody versus Flip, final battle, title for title, something like that. I thought maybe Ring of Honor would be something like that, you know? But, you know, that's the direction they went in. Jay Lethal hit a cutter off the top rope onto Flip Gordon, followed by a, uh, a lethal injection for the 1 2 3. So, of course, Jay Lethal retains the Ring of Honor World Championship against Flip Gordon. Like I said, damn good match. I enjoyed it. Then, of course, afterwards, you know, uh, Bully Ray comes out and attacks both of them because Flip stole his win from earlier on in the Battle Royal. Takes Flip out, takes Jay Lethal out, Lane Poffo tries to fight him. Um, and then of course, you know, takes, he takes out Lenny Poffo, then comes running down Cole Cabana, you know, Chicago's favorite son, Cole Cabana came out, uh, they take on Bully Ray, uh, Colt, Flip, and Jay Lethal end up doing the shield power bomb the Bully Ray through a table, so, that was pretty much that right there, so, yeah, I thought it was a good little summary, I guess, to get Cole Cabana on the main show to show him, I don't, I don't really know what that really was a setup for, but, yeah, the match is good, and, you know, the ending was fine, so. What can you do about it? And then we go to which I thought was the match of the night. Kenny Omega, the best bout machine machine taking on Penta L Zero. This match was absolutely fucking awesome. I loved every second of it. I thought it was a great match. I thought, you know, I think this is our first match ever. I know they had that six man tag in PWG a couple years ago. Uh or part of it I should say. But I thought this was a great singles match. I thought, you know, with Penta, you know, pretty much, you know, telling Kenny to egg on, like when Kenny was just hitting a bunch of barrage of V-triggers and he was telling them to keep bringing them, I thought that was great storytelling right there, um, you know, like with Penta trying to, escaping the, you know, one-winged angel, I thought was great, and you just had a really good, it was like a wrestling, but brawl at the same time, like they were beating the shit out of each other, but wrestling at the same time, I just thought their chemistry was great, he had some great spots as well, you know, Kenny doing a signature uh, crossbody off the ropes onto the outside, uh, Penta nearly killed Kenny when Kenny tried to give him a V-trigger on the apron, but Penta countered it into a, a package pile driver onto the apron, and the way Kenny Omega sprung up off that pile driver was absolutely insane, if you ask me. So that was just absolutely incredible. Uh, in the ring, you know, uh, uh, Kenny Omega was able to hit his own package pile driver on uh, Penta for a nice near fall right there. Uh, with lock in a barrage of V triggers, you know, on on uh, on Penta, and end up finishing him off with a uh, with a one winged angel for the win. So Kenny Omega defeats Penta L Zero M. Like I said, I just thought the psychology and just, you know, the, the work rate those two had in that match was just top notch. And uh, for the first ever match, I thought they went out there and blew, blew, you know, the roof off the house. I thought it was an absolutely tremendous match and I really enjoyed it. You know, Kenny Omega is just absolutely unbelievable. And, you know, I know Penta is really more of a brawl guy. But like I said, I thought it was a great mix of brawling and wrestling. So you got the best of both worlds if you ask me in this match. And of course, afterwards, let's go out. Let's go back on. Penta's still laying there, but when Penta gets back up, very noticeable. There's no tat. Well, there's tattoos, but there's only one really on one arm. And who the fuck is it? Chris fucking Jericho attacks Kenny Omega, hits him with some code breakers, and pretty much tells him, "I'll see you on the cruise." Professional fucking wrestling. You attack someone and tell him, "I'll see you on the cruise." What the fuck, man? <laughs> this that's just how awesome wrestling is. That's just absolutely incredible. That that's a line used to further a feud or to build to a match. So. I thought Jericho coming out was great. Uh, if it was not for the tattoos, I thought Jericho looked exactly like Pentagon. Uh, or Penta, sorry. Uh, it was The, the canyon was uncanny. He looked exactly like him. Honestly, he really did. Just like I said, the tattoos w w threw it off. But yeah, it was a nice surprise to Jericho. You need, you need some kind of surprise element in the show, and he definitely wasn't. So yeah, like I said, Penta and Omega definitely was matched in the night, if you ask me. And then we go to the match that I was looking forward to the most. 
but disappointed. And, you know, even though I thought the last power of the match ended up being really good, I thought before it was just very dull and not much to it. Of course, the match being uh, Marty Skrull taking on uh, Kazichika Okada. That match, first off, it went on way too fucking long. Um, it, this match actually ruined... Not, I don't want to say ruined it, but it really fucked the main event. Because this match went on like 25, 30 minutes. And by the time this match ended, the pay-per-view only had about like 15 minutes left. So, and from what I heard, you know, my friends were there. Like Miguel, Ravi, Justin, Phil, all of them were there. And from what they've been saying, they actually had a referee run down and tell them like, Hey, wrap this fucking match up because we gotta go to the main event. There's not much time left. So, this match should have no doubt been cut 10 minutes at least because it just the first 15 minutes were literally them doing fucking nothing it was marty you know trying to shoulder block okada the okada knocking him down okada just outmaneuvering marty was just working over marty and just being dominant where marty was literally getting no offense in the match at all it was literally just okada toying with Skrull, and it was just like okay fucking do something and the last 10 minutes, they decided to do something. You know, Okada went for the Rainmaker, but of course, you know, Marty countered it where he broke the fingers when Okada was trying to tease him with the two or the 205 thing, of course. Uh, broke his fingers, uh, locked in the, or tried to lock in the chicken wing, was unsuccessful. Uh, you know, it's some great back and forth wrestling, you know, back, uh, at that point. Squirrel was able to hit a power bomb for a nice near fall. Squirrel ended up hitting the Rainmaker after he hit, um, he showed Okada into the ref. Hit him with the uh, umbrella with the All In logo. Hit the Rainmaker for a nice near fall right there. And then they had some more chain wrestling. You know, try to lock in the chicken wing some more. But then you can definitely tell the finish was rushed because the finish just kind of came out of nowhere. Okada pretty much just got up and just hit like three Rainmakers on him. One, two, three. That's it. Okada defeats Marty Skrull. Like I said, I thought this was a very good match still. But man, the first 15 minutes or so were, were pretty brutal. Like literally the last 10 minutes of this match saved it. But this match should have been cut in time. It really fucking fucked the main event because the main event only got like 10 minutes. And the pay-per-view actually got cut. Like, the, the commentators were still talking when they cut the pay-per-view feed. So, uh, I just, yeah, they, they should have known better. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Uh, you know, I know they're they're used to the pretty much going whatever, how long they want because they're on New Japan World and they don't really have time restriction. But at the same time, it's like, this is pay-per-view. You know you have a time slot. You have to reach that time slot. You just don't go... You know, we, we'll fucking go until we want to stop. Like, no, this is, you have to have a time crunch. And, you know, you can tell, because right after the match, they went right to the next one. Like, All right, get the fuck out of the ring so we can get everyone else out of here for a quick six-man tag. And that's exactly what they did. Of course, the main event was a six-man tag team match. The Young Bucks and Kota Ibushi, the Golden Elite, taking on Rey Mysterio, Rey Phoenix, and Bandito. And um, pretty much this match was just a sprint. It was just everyone going balls to the walls. You can, if you blink, you'd miss a spot because, like I said, there's only 10 minutes or so this match was. Everyone was hitting, you know, stuff. You know, Kotobushi was doing some golden shooting stars on the outside uh, like it was No Tomorrow. You had some great tag team work from the Young Bucks. Mysterio was just bumping around like nothing. Bandino and Ray Phoenix were just hopping over the ropes like it was nothing. This was just a huge 10-minute just sprint and just crazy spots going around. I couldn't even begin to keep track of all the spots that happened because, like I said, they were just... They knew they had no time, so they just went up, went up there and got everything done. Which is kind of disappointing, because I think this match would have got another 5-10 minutes. They definitely could have stole the show. But since, you know, Marty and Okada wanted to go as long as they did, they kind of fucked these two, uh, this, these, uh, these two teams. So, it was very unfortunate that it happened, but it was a great six-man tag main event. Like I said, the sprint. I think they kind of fucked the finish up, because uh, the finish was, you know, the Young Bucks... Did more bang for your buck, but Kota did the, a moonsault as well before uh, Matt hit the 450. But we went for the pin. Uh, I think it was Bandino. Or someone broke the pin up. It, and um, they kind of looked at him like, we have to wrap this match up. What the fuck are you doing? So they immediately hit a, uh, a melter driver after that to pretty much say, listen, we don't break this up. We have to fucking finish because we have like a minute left. And um, double, melter fin uh, double, double, blah, 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 double melter driver was the finish of this match. And the Golden Elite won this match. Uh, like I said, that was a great sprint. Mysterio looked great. You know, he, him and his Wolverine gear, I thought he looked absolutely fantastic. Then a 619, hit a frog splash, attributed to Eddie Guerrero, which I thought was really nice on his behalf. But yeah, Young Bucks won the match, and pretty much the pay per view feeds cut like immediately because, you know, that was it. They had no more time left, and they got a cut right then and there. So, uh, like I said, you know, I really wish that Okada Scroll match didn't go as long as it did because I feel like this, the main event could have sold the show if they had five to ten more minutes. But, you know, what can you do? You live and you learn. This is definitely something you have to learn, especially, you know, for those two. I think you really need to nail it in the talent that, listen, this is pay-per-view. We have a time slot. You cannot go over the time limit we give you. And 
I really hope they, you know, figure that out. Because, I mean, that's a, this is an experiment. They're experimenting. It was a huge success, but you got to learn from mistakes. And they definitely, I think it's one they're going to learn from if they do another show in the future. So, um, that'll do it for All In. Yeah, that was the main event, and that was it. And, um, yeah, like I said, I thought All In was a huge success. I thought it was a great show. I thought the talent, uh, on paper, I wasn't really excited for the show. Because I feel like on paper, the card could have been so much better. And it really wasn't all that exciting. But, Man, did the talent come out to play. They went out, stole the show, had a lot of great matches, had a lot of fun. It was just a very fun four or five hour, depending if you watch zero hour or not, show. And I just thought it was so much fun. And I just want to say thank you and congratulations to Cody and the Young Bucks. Because without them doing this, this would never happen to begin with. So, thank you and congratulations. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please like below. If you guys watched All In yourselves as well, please feel free to leave your comment on your thoughts on All In if you enjoyed the show, if you did enjoy it. Pretty much anything all in related, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Uh, in the comments sec, uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. There we go. If you guys like, and uh, yeah, I'll do it for the video. And uh, thank you guys for watching. And that's not my outro. I, I just, I'm stumbling upon my words. That's usually what happens in my video. I just start, I just get flustered and start fucking up. But let's do it correctly. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like below. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching the video.